Hello guys, welcome to TMAC Adventures, Lisa here. Hey look, today I'm going to kick off Easter season. It is only a matter of weeks now till Easter and we know hot cross buns have been on the shelf for a long time, but don't buy them. When you've got a thermomix, you make them. And today I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to have these done in no time. You guys know that I'm all about shortcut substitutions, those sorts of things. You're going to see this in action today. Now I've put it on cook today. I'm going to come up to my three lines at the top of my screen. I'm going to then go to my week and I'm going to bring it up. I can see my internet's a little slow today. That's okay. Uh, so here we go. Chicken masala. And you can see I'm going to use, you can see these are the things my kids are cooking. And you can see how slow my internet that is it is wet there's other people online here it goes yes uh so hence the reason things are loading slow by the way talking about uh the internet if you're watching on do engage okay because that's going to tell facebook or if you're watching the replay over on youtube later that you want to see these you want to be notified when videos come up okay i'm here to help you get the most out of your thermomix that's what i love okay i love hearing from you i love to know what you're making and i love to give you more ideas on what else you can do easily simply with your Thermomix, okay? And if you don't have a Thermomix, welcome. My name's Lisa Keegan, okay? I'm in Australia. If you are in Australia, I'm happy to help you get one. Okay, so reach out um, and also tag friends and family who maybe they've got a Thermomix but they're buying hot cross buns. It's time to make it easy, okay? It's time to see how doable it is in your kitchen, even if you're overwhelmed and stressed or think you're not a good cook, okay? Come see how. So you can see my kids cook. They cook four days a week. We've got four kids that cook four days a week. You can see we've got tikka masala for dinner. We've got uh, Mediterranean courgette fritters uh, for lunch, which courgette, it's obviously from the UK, but it's zucchini. Um, and I just thought it's hot crust bun time. So I'm making hot crust buns. So I'm using a vegan recipe because it doesn't have butter in it then. But if you didn't have, I'm using uh, sunflower oil. If you don't want to use that, you don't like using it, that's okay. Um, use butter works the same okay so i do like this recipe it's one of my favorites okay let's go start cooking so first thing line two baking trays of baking paper and set aside i'm going to use my fear of cookware for this okay um actually i need to share some photos with you on the weekend i made the most amazing cinnamon scrolls and i made it in the fear of wear and they were a hit okay if you need bakeware uh, and even when you are making breads and stuff, to have sides up your containers so that the sides stay soft, it's worth it, okay? Rather than putting them on a flat tray, just a little tip. Okay, here we go. Let's get started. 240 grams of water. Um, I just realized as my table was wobbling that we've just had this room in absolute chaos because we needed to paint the window edgings before we get the kitchen done and before we get the floor ripped out it's all happening around here so over the weekend we had everything out and i haven't stabilized my table anyway that'll be okay we'll be right uh but i just realized that i forgot to put the little bits of paper that normally go under the legs back in place okay 40 grams of vegetable oil this is where you could use butter okay um as i said i'm using sunflower oil just our preference here. We always have this on hand because it's used for making mayonnaise, which we make ourselves. We're gonna buy it. Uh, so 40 grams, which is what? Two tablespoons. There we go. Okay, next up. 40 grams of dried instant yeast. Now your yeast should be kept in your fridge or freezer, okay? It does not like changes in temperature. It doesn't like humidity. Like it doesn't like that stickiness when it comes out of the fridge or freezer and then goes sweaty, okay? It, it slowly kills it. Um, strangely, the scales haven't come up. Just watch out on this step, okay? <laughs> so bring up your scales, close that off. Scales, that was very peculiar that they haven't done that. Might have to send to suggest that they fix that. 40 grams, 40 grams is a fair amount of yeast. You can see my brain ticking, can't you? If I was doing fresh yeast, I would do 40 grams. If I'm doing dry yeast, I'm gonna totally go off, off recipe here. I hope I'm not wrong. I'm gonna put 12 grams in, okay? Now, I told you I wanna teach you my thinking behind recipes. It's a good rated recipe, okay? If you put 40 in, I actually think you'll work. I don't think you won't work, okay? But 40 is a lot of yeast. Like that is going to be 
like four sachets. Do you, those of you who buy the sachets instead of the big barrel, like you're talking about a lot of yeast. Now, when I make pizza dough, for example, or bread rolls, we put in seven grams for 500 grams of baker's flour. Okay, seven grams to 500, which is one of your sachets, for those of you who do the sachet yeast. So 40 grams of dried instant yeast. I reckon they mean the fresh yeast. If you were buying fresh yeast because you had access to that from a baker, it's like a crumbly mix, 40 would be right. I feel like there's a little error there. I'll let you know in the comments later, okay, what I think. Anyone else wanna put comments in about that? Let me know. It does have dried instant yeast. This is dried instant yeast, but 40, that's a lot of yeast. Okay, I reckon you might get away with it. If you did, as I said, it's high rated and all that stuff. If you did 40, it's gonna work and you're not gonna taste yeasty because you've got cinnamon and nutmeg and things covering that flavor. But I'm also mindful that I don't wanna use all my yeast. <laughs> it's not gonna be all of it, but it's a fair chunk of yeast, okay? So, up to you. Okay, 12 grams, what I just put in, or 14 grams is actually uh, the equivalent of four teaspoons. Okay, insert the measuring cup in the mixing bowl then. Now, by the way, I think this recipe is actually off the recipe community. There is a collection on the cookie do that's called the Best of Recipe Community. And I think it's come off there. So that's actually, I think, where this recipe's from. And that's why it's also got a name on it. It's Chrissy's, Christy Tanya's Vegan Hot Cross Buns. Okay? I might go searching later and see if I can find the original uh, on that. Now, while this is cooking away, a couple of uh, quick memos from me. And by the way, when I say cooking, 37 degrees is activating the yeast. If it's cold, so you've got, say you've got cold tap water, or you did put the butter in, or uh, you've got milk in there because it's a brioche bun. The reason we heat to 37 is we start that yeast activating process. It starts letting them culturize. While they're cold, they're stagnant. They're, they're frozen. Well, they're not even frozen, but they just can't do anything. If they get over 40, they die. Okay? They're very, like those cultures are very temperamental. So 37, it doesn't matter for me. It is hot here today. It is probably close to 30 degrees. I didn't use anything cold in there, barring the actual yeast itself out of the fridge or freezer, and it doesn't hold its cold well for long anyway. But if you're in Tassie and your water is coming out cold, or maybe you're overseas in a cold place, I know some of you guys are, that's why we do the 37 degree step. Otherwise, it's a long process to get your dough to start getting fluffy and that gluten to activate. By the way, this is not gluten free. Gluten free friends, keep an eye out. I'll be bringing one to you later this week. Okay, it's a bit of a busy week in the thermomix in Australia. At the moment, we have a bowl campaign happening for both TM31 trade up owners, and we also have one as a gift we purchase. It's currently for those of you who want to know when this is, because I know that sometimes you're watching this years in advance. In advance? In retrospect, wrong way. Uh, it's at the moment mid. March 2024, okay? So if you are watching the here and now and you're like, wow, I want to get one of these things, reach out or go to my website and you'll find out how to buy one over there. Otherwise, reach out. I do love to chat to you, okay? Um, especially if you have friends and family as well if you want to get one. Like, it's make sure they buy through a consultant, okay? Uh, not through just the web, not through Thermomix and Australia website. Make sure they come through a consultant. So that's what's happening at the moment. So lots of online demos are getting... Thermixes into homes, which just makes my heart happy because the Thermomix changes kitchens. It makes them so much less chaotic, so much more confidence, so much more pride. So it brings the heart of the kitchen back, you know, the home, the heart of the home back to that space of the kitchen. You know, as I said, my four kids cook, my husband can cook. We gather around and we cook with our Thermomix and we create amazing food that I, there is no way without one I'd even consider. I'd be buying my hot press buns with all their preservatives, colours, additives, flower tasting stuff, okay? <laughs> so let's keep cooking. All right, for 40 grams of caster sugar. Now I'm actually using monk fruit sweetener just because that was the thing I reached for. It's a low carb option. If you had brown sugar, if you had icing sugar, if you had raw sugar, Honestly, use whatever sweetener you preference. You could even use a liquid sweetener. You could be using, you guys know I often use uh, rice malt as a sweetener option. Um, you'll often know that I'd pull that down as well. Now I would pull that down if I had the dried fruit component later, but I don't. 
So it's not hot cross buns without it being sweetish. You can't have savoury hot cross buns. It's just not right, okay? So that's what I'm using. I'm with the lid again. I love how the Thermomix just bosses me around. Oh, 40 seconds. It's just stirring that sugar through, which will boost the yeast. The yeast wants to, to grow and the sugar gives it a high. It makes it bunch up, okay? It gets it excited faster. Uh, if you ever want to speed up your pizza and bread rolls, like often I skip it, but if I'm in a hurry, just a pinch of sugar is enough to boost that dough to make it proof faster, okay? Because it eats up that sugar. All right, next. I'm just stopping it early. You guys know if you want to skip a step through faster, you can push the silver dial to stop that. That's what I did. Now, the enemy of yeast is salt. Did you know that? So I'm actually... That's not salt. That's flour. That's the, this is salt. Um, I've got, oh, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. I'm going to embarrass myself. Celtic salt. Is that how you say it at the moment? So, you know, I normally have Himalayan. I've got white at the moment. Hence the reason I grabbed the wrong one. So, I'm going to add my one teaspoon on top of my flour. Okay, because I just am. So, I'll put the other bits and bobs in. So, we've got cinnamon, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I'm just looking for my beautiful spoon I use. You guys know I normally use my awesome stone spoon with my teaspoon and tablespoon on the end and it's not where it's supposed to be. So I just have to go with this. One teaspoon. You can see I'm not using a teaspoon. I'm using a dessert spoon and guesstimating. I love the fact that we can guesstimate with the Thermomix. Okay, nutmeg. I think I'm out of nutmeg. It's not my favorite thing in the world so I didn't bother buying more. Uh, on with the lid. And it's got a 40 second mix through. Now, is this necessary? Or do I skip it in a hurry? Am I going to shorten it? Yes. Okay. It's just stirring it through. Now, this is where I want to get to. And I've got to remember, and I've got in front of me, my salt. Do not skip on your salt. You will be sad if you do. You'll be saying, Lisa, this does not taste right. And it won't. You will taste like flour. Okay, 400 grams of baker's flour. Now, I have a stone-milled, whole-grain baker's flour. You'll notice it's got a bit of colour and texture to it. Um, you know, we tr try. It doesn't always happen, but, if you know, we're predominantly gluten-free. If we're going to do – did I just go over? I did. If we're going to do um, flour, then I try my best to make it good flour, Okay. So that's why we've got that. It's in a massive 12 kilo bag on the floor, hence the reason I'm scooping down, okay? If you don't have Baker's flour, it's in Woolworths and Coles on the bottom shelf. It's usually about $12 for a five kilo bag. Tip, put it in the fridge or freezer for 24 hours before you bring it out and then leave it in your cupboard. What that will do is it'll kill any of the weevil larvae uh, that might be in it already or uh, the eggs that are in the the seal on the top of it, they'll fit in those folds, um, it'll kill them in case it won't then multiply in your pantry. This is more of an issue for us in this warm weather, they multiply, okay? Um, you know, if you can avoid it, it's better to, you know, kill them before they start. Okay, I need to add the salt in one teaspoon. I'm very excited. I have a salt pig coming. If you don't know what a salt pig is, look it up. Uh, very excited. That's on its way. All right, this has a four-minute knead. Now, I love this part of thermomixing where I don't need to knead. It's doing the kneading for me. So the handwork is taken out of it. This is your time to not leave a kitchen with a thermomix bouncing on your bench. It's your time to put away your ingredients, get out a mat. Now, I've got the oven mat today. Flour it up, ready to go. And if you haven't got your tray ready, now's your time to get the tray ready, okay, and clean up your space. The Thermomix does an amazing job of bringing that dough together for you and stretching it out. We don't need to work it once it comes out. It's worked for us. Now, this does have two needs. It is a longer need than a lot of our breads. Could you shortcut it? Definitely. Um, I'm going to try not to today. I'm going to try to have some self-control and let it do its thing. Uh, it does have a second need where we're going to add some dried fruit to it. Now, this is where you can get as creative as you like. I don't have dried apricots. I don't have sultanas, but I've got currants. So mine is purely going to be currants today. You could be putting chocolate chips in if that's your preference. 
You can put dried fruit, like whatever you've got, okay, is yummy in your hot cross buns. As long as it's got cinnamon, preferably nutmeg if you love it. Okay, I need to buy some more, I know. Um, then, you know, there's so much you can do. Just another tip, don't put your chocolate chips in first because if you put your chucky chips in now, because of the kneading process and that culture's getting warm, it melts it. You let up the big meltiness. You can see my table. I am regretting not fixing the legs. Your bench does not do this. Okay, I am on a rather high, what is this, 1.2 metre? 900, probably 900 uh, bench. And uh, it's not supported well. One day, probably by about end of April, early May, I'll be in my kitchen again, in my pantry, coming to you. So I'm so excited for them to have a space other than a bedroom to cook with you guys. So I'm going to, I said I wasn't going to, but I am going to pause this process and I'm going to get to the next step, which is adding my currants. All right, now I said earlier about not leaving your kitchen at this step. It's purely for the fact that your thermomix, depending on your bench, depending on the how sticky your dough is, it can get feet at this point in time. Our TM5 and our TM6 have uh, shock absorber feet. So that means they've got a bit of bounce to them, which is great. It means that they are protected, they don't lose calibration like our TM31s, they often did because they didn't have calib they didn't have shock absorbed feet. Um, so, but what that little rebound allows is it can, depending on your bench type, allow movement. Okay, so please kneading, stay close to your thermomix because it can, it's a bit like an upright washing machine. It can just take off and walk across the room. Okay, so excuse me, bending down. This is my organic carrots from Honest to Goodness. I'm just putting in my 150 grams. By the way, the, I do find in this recipe from memory, it feels like a lot of dried fruit in this recipe. I might actually stop there. Between 150 of currants, sorry, that said sultanas, 150 of sultanas, and then it's got 40 grams of currants, and then it's got 90 grams of dried apricot. By the way, you'll have to pre-slice your apricot, then like dice it, or chop it at the first step and then take it out, okay? Because otherwise you end up with apricots, okay? Um, it's a lot of dried fruit. So we're not big dried fruit people. We don't mind it, but I don't eat lots of it. So this is now going to finish the step for me. And can you see the movement I'm talking about? You guys are really rock and roll. So if my bench really is rock and roll, and even my rock and roll in camera, if I actually legitimately had a bench like this, which in a, in a kitchen I don't think you do, but say you did, say you had, I'm waiting to talk in between, an island bench, and it was rocking, put your thermomix on the floor, okay? So before you go to this step, Put your thermomix on the floor. Only for the fact that just going in between times, I'm going to stop it there. Like my bench, I just want to show you. I don't know if you guys can see this, but can you guys see, even without therming going, I've got like massive leans without the therming rocking and rolling. So if you legitimately have, like most of you, 99% of you have a bench and you have a bench that's connected to your bench top, uh, to your cabinetry, and it's not going to move a centimeter. It's not, it's not going to move an inch, like the, the teeny tiniest bit. It ain't going to move. But if you're working on, say, a temporary bench or an island bench and you get to a step like this and your thermomix is rocking and rolling like that, pause it, put your thermomix on the floor and let it finish on the floor. It won't fall off because it's on the floor, okay? So just a little FYI. I'm obviously stopping that step early because mine was moving a lot. I need to find the little pads that I had under there. So let me take you on to the next step. Transfer dough to a silicon bread mat. Now this is how I shortcut it. I love this recipe for shortcutting, okay? So turn the dial on the bottom, okay? It lets the dough ball come out. It didn't actually, like it did a pretty good job of bringing that in considering I only did it for 45 seconds. To get this extra dough out, because it's being a pain, put the lid back on, put your measuring cup in place. I push the home key to go back here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it up to speed 10. And that's just shot that sticky stuff off the blades to the sides. Now I don't have a thermy spatula, I've got my dream spoon, 
I don't know, something from the big shop. It's very good, I like it. I'm using a fair bit. Um, and I'm just gonna scrape, I don't know if you noticed before I took that off, but I'm just gonna scrape the extra off the outside. Now remember on our TM6, we have a cleaning function that cleans dough specifically. That's because it doesn't heat up the dough. If you heat up dough, it gets tacky and sticky and even worse to try and clean up. So remember to use that one liter of water, a little dishwashing drop in there and um, let that clean for you while you do the next step. Okay, it says to roll into a log and divide out. So at this point in time, I'm gonna show you how I make bread rolls. Oh my God, not bread rolls. Well, bread rolls, they are, aren't they? And we're gonna put them straight into the cast iron. All right. So I've pushed that dough together. You notice I did it with the actual mat, just that's preference. Should wear my apron. Can you guys see the flour all over me? Okay, 16 equal portions. So, now today I'm not showing you how to glaze and I'm not showing you how to um, put the crosses on top, okay? Um, with the glazing, I'm just, what do I need? Four, each of these into four, okay? With the glazing, I'm just gonna talk about that first. When it first comes out the oven, you want to have a coffee cup. Now you can follow it online here, but my tip is grab yourself a coffee cup, put in your tablespoon of sugar, your tablespoon of boiling water, stir it with your spoon, and then get your paintbrush and paint it. You need to do it while it's hot, but it's as simple as that. No need to have a clean thermi bowl, no need to fuss around with that. Okay, you simply just get a coffee cup, boiling water, equal portions, water to uh, sugar. Okay, any sugar type will do. It's just making a sticky glaze. So I'm just dividing this up into 16. Now as for the cross, I quite like, again, not using my fairy bowl. However, second bowl off requirement. You could use a second bowl or use your dirty bowl. Um, but I would, and I do, use a glad bag and I actually put a little bit of water and flour and a little bit of oil usually in there and then I can cut the corner and I pipe the cross on. So now it's pretty easy, I'm not putting crosses on, I'm just gonna glaze it, okay? So up to you as to what you do. Now I've got my little balls. They do say approximately 80 grams each. So if you wanna be particular, bring up your scales and you can put it on. 80 is gonna be a fair bit for 16 balls, but oh, I didn't have all the fruit in, that's why. So you can weigh them, okay? If you've done exactly the right amount, but I'm not going to. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just actually make them straight into little bread rolls. Now, how do you do that? You have your dough and you pinch the outsides together, okay? So pinch the outsides down and then you turn it 90 degrees and you pinch the outsides down. And you turn it 90 degrees, pinch the outsides down and turn it 90 degrees and pinch the outsides down. So you keep on going, and at the moment, if I roll it sideways, see how you've got ugly sides? So you keep on going until, and I actually do it with the side of my palm. So my technique, that's that's the broken down technique, but I actually do it with like this. So I grab the top of the dough with my hand and I smooth it around, and I smooth it around, and I smooth it around, and it's working in the palm of my hand. And then, if I have a look at this, that's the bottom side. And that's the top side, and you're aiming for that. Don't bring in it, it'll go like rocks. And then we put it in our pan, and we leave one finger width between it, okay? So I'll do it again for you. The, the tip though as well is to start with a smooth top. So at the moment, I wouldn't start that as the top, I'd turn it over and start that side, and then I'd bend it, okay? Sideways, around, tuck, okay? Can you guys see that? I know it's a bit tricky on that camera. I'm a bit out of sorts at the moment with the, since the move. So then just, now some people, your hand is the right size to be able to do it like this, okay? It's a palm movement and you're turning around and your thumb is tucking the side in. It's so individual as to whether that works for you because if, you're, if the bread rolls are too big or too small, I can't do that. I can still, if I start it the other way, I can kind of do it. Some people are really clever. Some people can do it too handily. I serve not, <laughs> okay? But can you see how quick this actually can be to make? Like you spent a couple of minutes in the kitchen with the Thermomix, you're now rolling them like this on a, on a mat, which is really easy to clean at the end. Uh, wipe it down, put it away for next time. 
You're then putting it in your tray, and then from here, I don't know what the instructions say, but my gut says cover it with, it says color, cover, cover it with a thermomat. So I put this on top of it and put it in a warm spot. Now it says to put it in a cold oven with a, with a container of boiling water under it. That is certainly, if it wasn't warm at your house, a really good idea. Um, another great option for those of us here in the warmer climate is put it in the boot of your car. <laughs> it proves super quick. It'll only take like, 20 minutes and these will be doubled in size, ready to actually take and put in the preheated oven. So even if you do it in an oven, take them out then after that 20 minutes or so, uh, preheat your oven, okay? And then you're going to, there it is, preheat to 180. This is the cross on top. If you're gonna do your cross, you pipe that on top. Okay, there we go. So 15 to 20 minutes at 180 degrees. Now, if you have our sensor, which is our limited time host gift at the moment, as I said, mid-March at the moment, um, you actually can poke your sensor into one of these hot cross buns and it alarms at you to tell you when it's done. It is phenomenal, okay? Over the weekend, as I said, I made scrolls, but I also made, so we're going to a friend's house Mexican night, uh, I, I said I'll bring our new tea and I'll bring some breads. Now I bought a gluten for the artisan gluten free loaf. Um, I think I've got photos. I think I took photos before we went. I also made the Portuguese normal loaf, which is a bit like a sourdough. It comes out with the beautiful um, puff, puffy air bubbles in it, just stunning. Um, and then I made the scrolls. So amongst all those happening, I put the sensor in. And it just pulled my attention back to when it was ready. Like I had so much going on for only about half an hour. Like it literally took me less than that. Like it wasn't even that in the Thermomix. It wasn't a big deal in the Thermomix. But it was the timing of everything because I had some things proving and some things in the oven. And to have the sensor alert me to you need to get me out of the oven now and my Thermomix was going off and my phone was going off because you don't have to have a Thermomix to use the sensor. It can just be done through an app as well. Um, Man, it, it, it was a lifesaver to me over the weekend. Um, it's been well used. So the point that it said I needed to put it back in the little charging thing to charge it, that's how much I used it. So, all right. And if you've got the meter, similar to the meter, but just next level. So uh, it connects to the Thermomix as well if you want it to, so the Thermomix tells you. All right, nearly done. So three to roll. You can see how quick this is. Now, if you don't want to cook them all now, say, I know some of you are just cooking for a couple of you. That's okay. Let them prove and then freeze them. Okay, freeze them. Make sure they're airtight or at least once they're frozen, put them in an airtight kind of situation so they don't go stale. And then when you want them, by the way, I'm just stealing some off some of the larger ones. Um, when you actually want to cook them, take them from the freezer, put them straight into a preheated oven, give them an extra three minutes to cook, and they'll be done. Simple as that. Okay, so don't feel that you have to have 16. If you're looking at this gun lease, I don't need 16. You could half the batch. That's fine too. But at the same token, why spend this time rolling it and getting dirty hands? You guys know that's not my fun, fun part of my, my job, getting dirty hands. Um, when you could actually, I'm just looking for more to take off here. You could actually have, you know, had leftovers. Same with the scrolls. If you ever make the cinnamon scrolls, um, I made a batch and a half. And similarly, I was like, oh, I'll just freeze some. Well, I was dreaming at that. <laughs> I was going somewhere where there was like 30 people. Uh, but yeah, that's another option with those as well. Anything that's dough related, just let it do its proof and then freeze it. Okay, it gets beautiful. So look at this, 16, ready to go. There you go, can you see what? There we go. So I'm just gonna cover it with my mat. Look at my mat, how clean that ended up. Barely needs washing. Okay, in a warm spot. Um, if you're stuck in your turned off oven with boiling water in a Pyrex dish or something underneath, it says 20 minutes, half an hour, I reckon 10 to 15. Take it out, take the boiling water out and tip it out carefully. Preheat your oven, in it goes, 15 to 20 minutes. And then remember to glaze them. Okay, boiling water, equal portions of water to sugar in your coffee cup, give it a stir, glaze them on. And it's the best part, please don't skip the glaze. You can skip the cross, don't skip the glaze. We put the cross on at Easter time, we hold off on the cross till then. But yeah, like don't skip the glaze. The glaze is that shiny, glossy part at the end. But otherwise guys, that's it for me today. I really hope you've enjoyed this. 
give me a call if I can help you or a message or an email or anything like that with any recipes you're making, any questions about the Thermomix. Uh, if you'd like to join our Thermomix team, reach out. I'd love to hear from you. I've had a couple reach out lately from all over Australia saying, hey, I'm curious about this business. And if it is something you're like, oh, maybe, reach out. Listen to a business information session, see if it's a good fit for you. And then if it is, you can make that decision. If it's not, that's also okay. You know, like it's worth gaining the information so that you can make a decision to see if it's a good fit for you. But otherwise, guys, I will be back, not tomorrow, but the next day with some more Thermomix inspiration, helping you get more out of Thermomix. Remember to head over to TMX Adventures. If you're not a subscriber, jump over there. There'll be more newsletters and stuff coming out towards the end of the month, okay? I don't do them all the time. You're not going to get something from me weekly ever. Um, I'm a one-person one show. Don't have time for that sort of stuff. I'd much rather engage with you guys and hear from you guys and support you guys than send out, you know, blanket info. So you will get info to keep you up to date, but it's not spamming by any length, okay? And there's always something in there to support you to get the more out of your Thermomix. Hello, Sandra. You've never made hot cross buns. Oh, yes. I love that. Three teenagers starting. <laughs> I can understand that. I might not have teenagers yet, but I completely understand that. Have a lovely day, guys. Take care, and I will see you soon in the next video. So thanks for joining me today. Bye for now.